About a year ago, I picked up this uh, Bird Thermaline Watt Meter. It's uh, rated uh, to 150 watts from 25 megahertz to 1 gigahertz. But I suspect that that frequency range is more limited by the response of the power meter, not so much by the impedance of the dummy load itself. So I'll take a look and sweep the, uh, the dummy load with the VNA to see uh, over what frequency range I actually can use this dummy load. I've inverted the screen color on the VNA display to hopefully make the menu show up better here on video. Now the first thing I want to do is set the sweep over what frequency range I want to measure this uh, dummy load. Now even though it's rated only down to 25 megahertz to a gig, I'm interested to see if it's going to work well for my uh, HF needs. So I'm going to uh, start the sweep at just at 1 megahertz. And then um, it's rated to go to 1 gig, but uh, I'm really interested to see if the, uh, the unit will go up to the 23 centimeter amateur radio band, which is uh, 1296 megahertz. So I'm going to sweep it out to 2 gigahertz. And uh, that'll give me a good idea of how well this will work uh, from HF all the way up to 1296. Once the sweep is set up, the next thing to do is run a user calibration. And this does a number of things. It will take care of the uh, directivity uh, uh, errors of the analyzer, as well as the, uh, the source mismatch and tracking errors. But then more importantly, it also establishes a new reference measurement plane right here at the end of my connector and adapter that we're going to use to connect up to the dummy load. So in this case, we're just using one port. So we can do a single one port calibration, which will just involve using three standards, an O, S, and L, or open, short, and load. Okay. Start off by uh, hitting the calibrate button until we want to do a calibrate. And we're going to do a one port SOL, or short open load, on port one. So we'll start by connecting our open to the end of the test cable. And then we'll hit the open button. And it runs a measurement on the open. And we do the same for the short uh, standard. We'll connect that up and click the short button. And then the same for the uh, calibrated load. We'll connect that up and hit the load button. Okay, with those three calibration measurements made, we just hit apply. And it'll apply those corrections now to the measurements and we're ready to go uh, sweep our dummy load. So now we can connect up our, our calibrated uh, cable and test system up to the dummy load here and make the measurement. Now one thing you didn't see me do is actually select uh, the measurement that we want to make because the default measurement, which was an S11 or return loss, is the measurement I want. And this is showing me now the return loss of this dummy load. And we can see down at low frequencies it's down close to uh, 40 dB, even better than 40 dB down return loss, which is excellent. And we get out to a gigahertz, and we're still at about uh, oh, 23 or so here. In fact, we can throw a marker on here, so we can actually go see that. Let me go grab that marker and move it over. So that's sitting at 23.3 uh, dB. That's about a 1.15 uh, SWR or so. So that's still quite good at 1 gigahertz. And if we take this marker out to, uh, say, 1296, uh, let's just right about there or so. Uh, we can see we're like 34 dB of return loss. So this uh, dummy load would work great on the 23 centimeter band. Now most hams would be interested in you know, looking at the SWR or more familiar with that parameter. So I'm going to set my display format to SWR and then uh, let me auto scale this display. And uh, so now here's our SWR sweep uh, from again 1 megahertz out to 2 gigahertz. And we can see here's 1 to 1 right here. So uh, down at this uh, low frequency down here, uh, down in HF, we're sitting at about 1.02 to 1. The, it peaks out just about just over a gigahertz at about 1.14, 1 1.15 1 uh, to 1, which is about what we suspected from the return loss. And dips down again, uh, uh, luckily enough, right around 1296 to be about 1.03, 1 1.04. And even out at 2 gigahertz is only at about uh, 1.5 to 1. So uh, it's a pretty good uh, dummy load even out to, uh, to 2 gigahertz here. That was an interesting point of reference. Uh, let's take this uh, very inexpensive uh, dummy load that was designed just for primarily for HF, I would imagine, and see how well that uh, compares on this same frequency range. I'm going to start off by saving this SWR sweep that we have. Um, uh, so I've got a trace that we can compare into memory here. And now we'll disconnect uh, my bird dummy load and we'll connect up the, uh, 
a cheap HF dummy load and see what it looks like on the same scale. Interesting, it, uh, the SWR is just rocketing right off the screen. I mean, the top of the screen here is only 1.65 to 1. So let's just uh, take my scale and let me pop that up here a little bit. Just, all right, with the scale change, um, we can kind of see that uh, this cheap dummy load here uh, at 200 megahertz is at about 1.3 to 1. That's not too bad, so it's usable to VHF. Uh, we get up around 300, 400 megahertz. Um, you know, now we're over two to one, so certainly would not work well at all for uh, UHF and above. And you may be able to see here that the the reference trace that we saved is actually this green trace. This is actually the SWR sweep for the uh, the good bird dummy load. So we can see it's you know basically flat <laughs> across this whole range, well under one and a half to one, all the way up to two gigahertz, where the uh, inexpensive dummy load would really fall apart. Uh, you know, a little bit more above HF. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Quick look at uh, sweeping some dummy loads with a vector network analyzer. If you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. Uh, comments are always welcome, and thanks again for watching.